Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. we got a great show for you today. I know you're going to love it. Boy, today we have got Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. He is a veteran of the Home Defense Show. I think we've had Gabe on, uh, boy, like maybe four times in the last uh, two years. Gabe's an awesome, awesome instructor. He's different. He's different than, uh, than most trainers. Let me play you a little audio clip here that's going to tell you exactly what the difference is between Gabe and other instructors. Here we go. Tell what Jeff and Tia? Yeah, and we give him Bonnie a hard time. Yeah, but he took care of it. But what made it worse was the trail boss comes over. Curly? His name is Curly. Perfect. You know what the cook said about him? He said he killed a man in a knife fight. He said he slid him from neck to nuts. I'm not happy about this. This guy's a cowboy. One of the last real men. He's untamed, a mustang. We're trained ponies. It'll do us good to be in his world for a while. Do us good? He was hanging the help. He was helping us. This guy is not normal, I'm telling you. Did you see his eyes? He's got crazy eyes. He's a lunatic. I'm telling you, we are going into the wilderness being led by a lunatic. He's behind me, isn't he? Okay, if you haven't guessed by now, you probably realize that little audio clip was from the movie City Slickers with Billy Crystal. I love that movie. I just love it. And you know that the trail boss, uh, Jack Palance, he reminds me a little bit of Gabe Suarez. And he's a Mustang. And the rest of us are tamed ponies. (laughs) But hey, we'll get into that more in segments two and three, and I think you'll enjoy that very much. What has been going on in the life of Skip Coriel and and my whole family, my tribe. This past week, we've been getting a lot of rain in the area uh, here in uh, Barry County. And you know that I'm on the Barry County Sheriff's Auxiliary, and we get called out from time to time when there's a natural disaster or a missing person or something like that. You know, we all get called out, and we help our community. And That happened the last uh, three days. There's been flooding all over southern Barry County, and a lot of people are losing their homes. And so we called out the Sheriff's Auxiliary, and we have been filling sandbags and laying sandbags. And for me, I like to do things as a family. So I took myself and my wife and the three little ones, you know, Phoenix, Amethyst, and Cedar, and we all went to Prairieville Township Hall, and we filled sandbags. And then yesterday, we went over to a a retired couple's house on the lake, and we laid sandbags for them, put them all stacked up in the right place so that their basement of their home would not get flooded. I got to tell you, that was hard work. It was a lot of hard work. Uh, But, you know, we worked hard, we got it done, and... The nice lady even gave us lemonade. So, hey, just one more way that you can serve your community. So God bless the Barry County Sheriff's Office. Aside from that, I've been cutting a lot of firewood. I am determined not to run out of wood this year. So about 45 minutes a day, I try to go out there and cut firewood. Not too much because I don't want to re-injure, you know, the back as it is. And swimming. Oh, the kids love swimming. Uh, We try and go uh, three or four times a week. Cedar and I will go snorkeling and just have a good time, get cooled off. Supposed to get up to 95 the next couple of days. Uh, You know, I told that to Gabe Suarez. He's from Arizona, and he just kind of scoffed at that. 95 degrees, uh, he referred to that as short-sleeved shirt weather. Yeah. (laughs) We'll have Gabe come up here to Michigan in January. And, uh, hey, it's all relative, right? What's normal for one is not normal for another. 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out the news now. I'm going to BearingArms.com. Here's, here's an article that, that I found interesting. New Zealander gets the rough welcome to the U.S. he deserved. When you're talking about visitors, there's an idea that you want them to feel welcome. You want them to go home and tell them how awesome their visit to your locale was. The idea is that if they do that, their friends may plan trips and you get the economic benefits of tourism. Sometimes a warm welcome is the wrong thing to give. Kind of like this New Zealander. Troy George Skinner, 25, arrived at the girls' home in Richmond, Virginia last Friday while armed with a knife, pepper spray, and duct tape, according to Goochland County Police. He had smashed the glass door and was reaching inside to unlock it when the girl's mother fired her handgun, striking him in the neck. He survived. Aw. <laughs> Troy George, welcome to America. Uh, that's the way we do it here. I know in New Zealand, uh, you know, you guys don't like firearms. You have a lot of laws against firearms. But in America, it's a way of life. Skinner had first met the girl on Discord. That's a software platform and chat site for gamers. After several months, she stopped talking to him, despite Skinner's attempts to continue contact. You know, seeing as though everything turned out well, aside from the trauma, you know, the girl must have faced. But, you know, this guy, I'm thinking poetic justice. I mean, he must have spent thousands of dollars to buy a ticket to fly here to Virginia from New Zealand because he was going to he was going to rape and kill these these two people, you know, the mother and the daughter. And I guess I think New Zealand should uh, you know, pay us for services rendered, uh, maybe even give this uh, mom a medal or something because she certainly get the the New Zealand Home Defense Medal of Honor, something like that, but I don't think they're going to do that. New Zealand is beautiful. You know, I love the uh the mountains and everything in, in New Zealand, uh, the ocean, it's just incredible there. But I'd never live there because I wouldn't be free. Uh, okay, here the sheriff of the county says, He was not invited here. He was not expected here. He had been told in the past that this daughter no longer wished to communicate with him. Well, I guess he found out the hard way. Oh, welcome to America, Jack Wagon. <laughs> You know, you got to be really, really careful on uh, any type of a social media platform because there's some real crazies out there. I mean, I've got a 7, an 8, and a 12-year-old. We don't let them on the Internet other than to download, you know, maybe little kids' games or something. But if they start asking for names and addresses and stuff like that, the kids know they are not allowed to give out anything about their personal life uh, when they are doing things like that. You have to be very, very careful because this stuff can rear up its ugly head and you can end up getting bit in the butt by some maniac from New Zealand. You don't know who these people are. So, boy, tell your kids to be very, very careful um, when they're on the Internet. All right, here's another article. we got time for one more. Gun owner loses firearm in sofa at Ikea. I think that's a furniture store. When you're carrying a gun, it's important to remember where it is at all times. How could you not know where your gun is? I mean, it's in your holster, right? And your holster is always in the same spot? That's a no-brainer. After all, it's a life-saving tool, but only if you can get to it when you need it. On the other hand, a lost gun is a major problem. Off your person and out of your control, you don't know who will pick it up and what will happen with it. That's bad for everyone. You got that right. However, one gun owner made it hard to claim we are all responsible when he allowed his gun to do an impression of pocket change at an Ikea. After finding a gun in a sofa at Ikea, a child fired the loaded... Oh, no. A child fired the loaded weapon in the store, prompting an investigation of the incident. Earlier that day, a customer at the Fisher's Indiana store sat down on the couch to test it out. When he got up to keep shopping, he didn't realize his gun had fallen out of his pants. You know what? He probably had it tucked in the small of his back without a holster. You know, that's what drug dealers do. That's not what responsible, 
armed citizens do. Folks, the gun has to be in a holster, a good holster, a holster that is secure, that's not going to lose the firearm, and the trigger of that holster has to be totally covered up so that it can't be uh, inadvertently uh, pressed. IKEA says they conduct regular walks and safety audits, but it's unlikely they had any reason to look for a firearm in the cushions of a sofa. Well, I, you know, they probably just added that one to their checklist. And you know what else, folks? That Indiana store might put up a no guns allowed sign now, thanks to one idiot who uh, was irresponsible and did not take good care of his firearm. So, hey, thank you, whoever you are. We really appreciate that. Not. Okay. Well, hey, that's about all the time we have in segment one here. Um, We will be coming back and speaking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. If you want to check him out ahead of time, go to suarezinternational.com, S-U-A-R-E-Z, suarezinternational.com. Check out Gabe. Awesome guy. Good trainer. You're going to enjoy hearing what he has to say. Okay, this is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. My name is C.J. Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Front Lines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Today we are speaking uh, with a a friend, a fellow instructor, Gabe Suarez from Suarez International in Arizona. Gabe, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Hey, thank you for having me. You know, Gabe, I really should slap myself just for mentioning your name and mine in the same sentence because oh, come on. we are oh. not on the same <laughs> level when it comes to experience or anything like that. And I'm okay with that. You know, I, I seek out people, instructors who are better than I am, you know, at any given field. And, and I think that's how you get better. So, Absolutely. hey, you know, you got to have some humility and, uh, hey, color me humble today. Um, okay. Now, now Gabe... Uh, I've been watching your uh, your emails coming out. Um, you got a lot of stuff going right now. Uh, real briefly, you know, tell people about Suarez International because I would like to hook up my listeners with you. Okay, well, um, we're uh, kind of a company that does a lot of different things. Uh, we we started off as trainers, uh, you know, just doing specifically training and. Uh, and so on. That still uh, exists, and, and we do quite a bit of it. We push the envelope quite a bit. You know, I, I know that there are a lot of trainers out there, but there are a lot of trainers that'll teach you how to shoot. What we teach you how to do is think and fight. It's, it's different in that respect. You know, as as I got deeper and deeper into the training, I realized that oftentimes what happens is that students come to class with poor equipment or, or very well marketed but nonetheless poor equipment, and so we got into the equipment business, you know, making our own stuff. Uh, all the stuff that we make is uh, are things that we learned are beneficial and necessary from the street and from our, our training experiences, and so we do that too. We teach guys how to, how to kill bad guys with the best gear available. How's that? 
Uh, that's great. Now, the best gear available. I know you're a Glock man, and it seems like people either they love Glock or they hate Glock. In your mind, is Glock the only gun? No, absolutely not. It, it's the most prolific gun, you know, and the, and the thing is that as an instructor, uh, I have to be able to work with whatever you give me. I mean, I've, I've worked overseas, and, you know, I get off the plane, they'll give me a, a CZ-75 or a Beretta 92, or once I even had to do some uh, teaching with a Makarov, of all things. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, so you, you, know, you, you adapt and you use what's available. Here in the U.S., if you show up and there's 20 people in class, all of them are running Glocks, and you show up with a custom 1911, you know what, you're not really doing a good job. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you have to use what everybody else uses. And like it or not, it's a Glock world. Just like if you're running a rifle class, it's an M4 world. If you're running a shotgun class, it's an 870 world. You know, it, it is what it is. I carry Glocks. I like Glocks, but it's not the only weapon. Uh, you know, I, I, I like SIG 226s. And I think I'm in the minority when it when it comes to that because people tend to these days to to want to not work with double action pistols, but I I like them. Yeah, you know I I have the same thing when I'm out training, but you know the people that I'm training, well actually probably at least half of them haven't yet been uh, polluted or corrupted or whatever you want to call it with prior training. Uh, they're they're brand new you know, right out of the box, you know, they're still in the cellophane. I get them out on the range and I unwrap right. them. And boy, we see some pretty weird, bizarre stuff there. But you, you're trained, you, you train people that are more advanced. Typically, you wouldn't go to a Suarez class to get uh, an intro, you know, like a first steps class or something like that. What I see are people that come to class, they have a gun, they really, they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to draw it. They they don't know how to load it. I've seen people load the rounds in backwards, and you know, and try and put yeah. the magazine in backwards. I mean, you just all this stuff. And uh, you know, I read a study a couple of months ago that was done in Texas, and it basically said that only one percent of all the concealed carry holders, licensed concealed carry holders in Texas go on to get any level of advanced training. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that just, that blows me away. Because on the one hand, it's a right. But on the other hand, that, that scares me. Because people are out there, they really don't know what's going on. Uh, well, you know, the, 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 thing, the thing is that there are excellence seekers in every endeavor. And excellence is not a right given to you by the Constitution. And, you know, let's face it, the, the majority of people today in the West, and I'm, I'm counting everything, you know, Europe, uh, North America, you know, even, even Latin America, they're, they're lazy, and they will pinch a penny until Lincoln's guts drag on the deck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good and, one. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. And so what, what they want to do is that they'll do the least amount possible mm -hmm. or necessary to, you know, get the little piece of paper that says it's cool for them to, you know, to carry and so on. Can you imagine if, if we applied the same logic to driving? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, we could, we could get into a very controversial topic with that, but uh, I think it's good for people to have guns and carry them around everywhere and so on, but... You know, it's, there's a responsibility, and if you're if you're going to do that, and I think you should, it's incumbent on you to spend some time and to get good with it. Because if you make a mistake, it's yeah. not just you; it could be other people that pay the price for it as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it could be a stranger, or it could be your wife, or your kids, sure. or or whatever. It, it's just that's huge. Well, Gabe, the well-rounded. Let's not let's not say concealed carry holder. Let's say the the someone who is well rounded at personal defense, someone who can protect themselves and their family. What do they look like? Wow. Um, well, what I, I think I think that somebody that has everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I would I would tell them is get physically fit. You know, I still see guys show up to class. You know, with whatever kind of pistol they bring, it doesn't really make any difference. And they're there, you know, because they want to protect themselves and everything else. But you know what? They weigh 300 pounds. 
they they can't bend over to pick up a magazine that they dropped and they run out of breath walking up to the target to paste the holes and stuff like that that guy's not in danger from a terrorist or a mugger he's in danger <laughs> from metabolic disease you yeah, know you're right <laughs> And it's like, you know, you tell them, look, you know, see, as an instructor, it's my job to tell you if, if there's a deficiency, it's my job to tell you not to just pet your fur and make you feel good. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, look, you know what? Let's put our egos aside. Let's talk about this. All right, you're grossly overweight. You're very unphysical. Today's world, there are very few things that cannot be fixed by modern medicine, yeah. you know? So, I mean, if you're serious, if this is just a hobby and you just want to go and, you know, shoot guns and make holes in a target, it's fine. Then you know what? Then forget about anything I'm going to tell you. But if, if you're serious about this, then, you know, you, instead of going to the range twice a week, how about you go to the gym once a yeah. week and go to the range once a week? Watch what you eat. All that information's out there today. I mean, it's not like in the 1970s and 60s where, I mean, there, you had to hunt and dig for your information. Today, it's at the right there on your phone, a touch of a, of a thumb, you can get anything, any information that you want on diet, exercise, health, fitness, et cetera. But it takes effort. You know, and the other thing I would tell them is you start thinking like a fighter. Start thinking like a fighter, not just a guy who's just a regular Joe Blow guy that goes to the range every once in a while and shoots a match and stuff like that. Think like a fighter. You know, one of the, the precepts that we uh, that we wrote about is, you know, uh, number 10, live as if there is an enemy around every corner and behind every door. And, you know, it doesn't mean you have to you know, walk around like a crazy guy or something like <laughs> that, but, you know, it means that you pay a little bit more attention. You think tactically. You think... As, as if you were a target, because you are. So you, you get their body right, get their mind and heart right. Then, okay, now let's go to the range and teach you how to shoot and fight and move off the X and all these other cool things that are exciting. You know, the preparation isn't exciting. You know, not, not eating fries and Cokes is not exciting, but that will do <laughs> a heck of a lot more for you than putting a new set of sights on your pistol. <laughs> so what does Gabe Suarez eat? Well, I, I'm about to turn 58 here in September, so I'm scratching the surface of geezer. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, I, I've stayed fit all my life. Right now, I am eating what I guess you'd call a modified paleo diet. You know, a lot of protein. I drink a lot of water. I stay up on all of the uh, physical studies, diet studies, and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, I was having a conversation in, in class uh, a couple of months ago. It was a question that somebody asked during lunch. And so I, you know, kind of as I was eating my food, I gave a little impromptu, you know, 30-minute lecture on it. Um, there was a student in class that was a, a bariatric surgeon. And he came up to me afterwards and said, dude, everything you said is what I tell these people that come to see me. You know? <laughs> So, and it's just it's a matter of, of just doing your own research because it's out there. Um, yeah. You know, so it's a modified paleo, a lot of protein. I don't worry about eating saturated fat and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this morning I had uh, four eggs and six slabs of bacon. That was oh, my breakfast. Oh, wow. You know, the, the thing is, you can do that if you exercise, you know, if you don't exercise. And, and here's what I found. All my research on all of this, it's like this isn't rocket science. It's like... No. If you want to lose weight, you got 300 pounds, man, you eat less and you exercise more. And Yeah, that yeah, that's true. That's true. That, yeah. That's it and that's that's discouraging to a lot of people because they they'll go online and there are all these hucksters out there who want to take their money, yeah. sell them this diet and this special food and all that stuff. And it, it's like for me personally, you know, hey, I'll skip Coriel warts and all. I love Mountain yeah. Dew. I, I yeah, but it hates me, and yeah. and I I know it's not good for me. Yeah, and uh, my big struggle is right now. I'm drinking a bottle of water. Mm-hmm. If water tasted like Mountain Dew, I'd have no problem whatsoever. Well, but you know, you know what you could do. <laughs> you can get this stuff. Uh, there's a, a couple of companies that make them, uh, and they're like uh, little tabs that have electrolytes in them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I drink, I drink, I've got an Nalgene bottle right here on my desk that, that I'm going to down before lunchtime. I pop uh, one of those tabs in there, and, you know, it gives the water a little bit of a flavor without it being excessively sweet. 
but you know, listen to to the readers. Go on Amazon and and do your research. the The first book that I would tell people to read is a book called Protein Power, and it was written by a husband and wife team. I can't remember their first name, but the last name is Eads E A D E S. I read that book and I attended a seminar uh, that they did. I think it was back in 1995. And uh, it totally changed my view of nutrition and how to mm-hmm. eat and and everything else. A couple of others that are good: Death by Food Pyramid. I've got them in the library at home. I don't I don't have them right here. I would have given the the author's name, but Death by Food Pyramid. Another one: Eat the Yolks, as in the yolks of the eggs. And then the third one is called Cholesterol Clarity. And all those books are available at Amazon. They're easy reads. They're they're written by just regular cavemen type guys like you and me. They're not medical journals, and you know regular people can read them. And if you even if you don't exercise, if you you pay attention to what the books tell you, you'll lose weight. You'll, well, you'll lose body fat. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is what we're what we're really talking about. We want to keep muscle but lose body fat. When you do that, everything kind of normalizes. You know, your, your hormonal balance normalizes. All these cardiovascular things, blood pressure, thyroid, all that stuff will will tend to normalize. You know, if you if you shed those unwanted uh, issues of body fat. And the important thing for the context that we're talking about, it's going to make you a better fighter. Yeah. You know, strong and fit people are harder to kill, and they're better at killing bad guys. So. I mean, you know, I look at a guy, you know, 300 pounds, and he's a great shot, but you know what? That guy's not going to win the gunfight, because even if he does, he's going to have a freaking heart attack and die, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. So what's the point, you know? It's, uh, yeah. Fitness is really important. It is. <laughs> I know what you mean. And, you know, for me, for me, Gabe, it's like people, even the 300-pound people, they don't want to come to a class about personal defense and look at a guy who who weighs three hundred pounds, uh, shaped like uh, you know, an egg, and then be taught about personal offense. They they want to look at somebody who's buff, who's in shape, lean, mean fighting machine. And I don't blame them at all. And boy, I have been working hard over the past uh, well year and a half that I've been doing this this podcast, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know talking to guys l- like you, it keeps me accountable. Uh, you yeah. know, it inspires me because you got to network. You got to talk to guys because we're we don't want to be an island, you know. Absolutely, so, uh, absolutely. You know, you know this it, is... it is it is all a matter of discipline. I mean, you know, like I like I said, I'm 58. Uh, I weigh in this morning at about a buck 80, deadlifting 455 pounds, and and I'm just I'm I'm super fit. You look at a guy like like uh, Pat McNamara. I've never met him. Okay, but you know, he's in his early 50s, I believe, and he's as strong as hell. Uh, and there's other guys, so it's not like, hey, this is a one-off. No, I mean it's a matter of, of deciding what do you want to be. Yeah. You know, how do you want to be a year from now? And then you take steps to accomplish that. And it's the same thing in anything, in business, in education, in relationships. But you got you got to have the self-discipline to to follow the the steps. Yep, absolutely. Okay, we're out of time for this segment. We're speaking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking. I think we'll talk about rules of engagement and maybe cool. the average person's hesitancy to actually press the trigger. Uh, so we'll talk about that. While we're away, go ahead and check out our sponsors. Uh, go to EliteFirearms.us, see what Larry Jackson can do for you in choosing the right firearm. Then go, go to FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and see how you can protect your family against the criminal justice system should you ever get wrapped around that axle. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Felix Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. 
Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get civilian combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry book by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel, and we are speaking with one of my favorite instructors, Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. You know, I call you the balls to the wall, you know, Johnny Badass of the instructor world. Just, <laughs> well, just because of the way you teach, and I mean, I, I watch you on YouTube, you know, all the time, and hey, you don't pull punches. You say, hey, this is the way it is. You want to live, you want to die. Make that decision right now. And I appreciate uh, a straight shooter, Gabe, and and that's that's what you are. Um, well, thank you. You know, you look at that three hundred pound guy and you go, "Hey, did you know that you're fat? <laughs> you know that's going to kill you. You need to lose weight." You know, um, yeah. one of the things that I run across, Gabe, in my classes, is the hesitancy, and and to some degree there should be a hesitancy. You don't want guys running around there, loose cannon, saying, "Ah, hey, I can't wait to shoot somebody." But that's not the problem that I see with the majority of my students. The majority of my students, they, they, they want to do things like fire warning shots and shooting people in the kneecap. You know, all this stuff they've seen, you know, on Bruce Willis movies. Um, what do you run across at your level of training? Our guys are, they're a little bit past the, the basic CCW level. But still, there's, there's this, this um, I don't know, I guess. I guess fear of the aftermath, fear of the after action, and uh, you know I, I got to tell you, there's there's a whole industry catering to that aspect, uh, the fear of the after action. You know, the gun industry is very fear driven. Gun sales, that you know, before we finally got a good president, you know, were very fear driven. Well, they're going to take away your gun, so you know, mm -hmm. people bought all kinds of stuff because they're afraid. And I think it's the same thing with the uh, the after action process but you know the, the thing is that if you understand the law and the law allows you to kill people under certain circumstances it's not against the law to kill people mm -hmm. as long as those circumstances are met you know and uh, we published a, a while back on on my blog the flow chart of killing you know and oh my god the consternation in the industry you know <laughs> but uh, if you if you follow the flow chart it tells you when you're justified and when you're not. You know, so it's almost like a mental kata that you go through. And if you, you know, if you do it enough, you think about it enough, it, 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 it's very simple. It's very simple. There's no, there's no concern about that you're going to do the wrong thing because you have met the, you know, the, the parameters. And the whole idea behind this, and then, you know, we've got a, a class that we teach that I think we've talked about before, it is intended to give the student a feeling of certainty, of moral and legal certainty in their actions. And then if you have that, you don't have fear. Fear is the lack of certainty. Certainty alleviates fear to, to a great degree. You know, you, you take a guy that has been in multiple gunfights, and, you know, he is going to look at the world and events like that a little differently than somebody that has it because he has that experience. And so what we try to do is we try to take that experience, you know, uh, from, you know, myself, the staff. We've got a number of 
homicide investigators and, and legal professionals and whatnot that we that we discuss with and, and, and so on. And so we present a, a package where the student the, the student's fear and apprehension under those circumstances will be alleviated, and then they understand where where they are in the in the in the, the flow chart, so to speak, what they can do and what they can't do, and they don't have to be afraid, and they don't have to hesitate and get mm-hmm. themselves or somebody else killed because they're afraid. But Gabe, I've never been in a gunfight. I'm trained. I, I'm ready. I'm practiced. But you have. Uh, I, I know, just from reading and from listening to you, I, I know you, you've been in multiple gunfights. Your first gunfight, did you? Was there a hesitancy? Uh, that normal reaction? Yes or no? No, there wasn't. Why? There wasn't, and I'll tell you the reason was because I had, I had made it clear in my mind where I stood and what I couldn't couldn't do. I I memorized the department's shoot policy okay mm-hmm. uh and you know in fact i probably i could probably it's been almost 20 years that i've been out of the law enforcement but so let's see an officer can use deadly force to defend himself or another officer from the use or threatened use of deadly force uh an officer can use deadly force to protect the citizen from the use or threatened use of deadly force uh to prevent a crime involving the use or threatened use of deadly force and to apprehend a suspect of a crime involving the use or threatened use of deadly well there it is okay mm-hmm. uh and so you know i memorized that and so whenever i went to a call or had a contact or whatever there was no doubt or ambiguity under these circumstances this is what i can do you know and so i i i got my mind right about this long beforehand and so when the first event was there it was clear what was happening and, you know, we, we just went through the motions. Yeah. You know, a lot of cops, they'll say, hey, you know, no matter what else happens, I'm going home to my family tonight. Is that kind well, of yeah, the attitude? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. You know, and, and uh, the, the, the Spanish have a great saying, um, you know, loosely translated into English, it's better you bring me tobacco in prison than flowers in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like yeah. that. I like that. <laughs> you know, so it, uh, it, you know, but, but again, the idea is don't, don't bring me either. You know, how about we have a whiskey afterward and I tell you the story, you yeah. know, that's what we, that's what we want to do. And, and there's this, there's this perception that if you do shoot a bad guy, you're automatically going to go to jail. That's mm-hmm. not true. You're not. You know that you're automatically going to get sued. You're automatically going to get prosecuted. You're out. No, 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 no. You're not. That's just not true. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you do something stupid and you act stupidly and you speak stupidly or don't speak at all, yeah, you're probably going to get arrested because you're not you're not giving the law enforcement guys much of a choice. Yeah. But but otherwise, you know, normal good guy defends himself against the bad guy. You know, and there's no other associated factors involved. You know, hey, you're, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah, it, Gabe, is it a bad thing? Uh, you know, let's say you 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 make a call; it's questionable. You know, the officer he's not sure if you're a good guy or a bad guy, and so he takes you into custody, takes your gun, whatever, takes you to jail. Is it really a bad thing um, to to go to jail? Um, you know, I think if you can avoid being listed as a suspect in the mm-hmm. crime report that is a, a worthy goal to not be listed as a suspect in the crime report yeah um, if you're listed as a suspect you are arrested you're going to have to post bail you're going to be arraigned and all this sort of thing which isn't the end of the world but it would be better if it didn't happen okay and um, it, it will tend to not happen if you are able to classify yourself by your words your actions your demeanor even your attire uh, as a victim, and you know, that's something that we teach people how to do. That you know, the, the the law enforcement guys, they're not out driving around. You know, they don't get in the car. Okay, let's see which armed citizen we can screw <laughs> over today. You know, it's not like that. But you know, that myth is perpetrated by the folks that kind of tend to want to blow that kind of stuff out of proportion. And yeah. uh, if you present yourself as a good guy chances are that you're going to be classified as a good guy so how do you 
persuade the officer, and persuade is probably the, the wrong word for it. Uh, how do you get him to think, thinking that, hey, this guy's a good guy, and I, boy, I probably would have done the same thing in his, his situation. Because, you know, you, you'll talk to, to lawyers, and they'll say, shut the hell up, don't say anything, call me, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll come and bail you out of jail. You know, okay. it, well, I'll try not to, stick. I know you have some, you know, associates in the industry. I'm trying not to step on people's toes. And don't, stuff. don't worry All about right. it. Step away. So here, here, here's the deal. If if you ask an attorney mm-hmm. advice on something, they're going to give you an answer based on their area of expertise, right. which is the courtroom. Okay? So what they want to do is they want to take every event, every conflict, every confrontation to the courtroom, which is a battlefield that they can understand. Mm-hmm. What the listener needs to know is that every time that you step into the courtroom, you're bleeding money, and that money's going to your <laughs> attorney. Okay? Yeah. I've been there, and believe me, that's the way it goes. Okay? Now, um, what I am suggesting is that you can avoid that altogether. Victims do not have to go to court. Victims right. do not have yeah. to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an attorney. They don't because they're victims. Victims get to go home and sleep in their own bed. They get to eat whatever they want for breakfast the next day, and they're victims. The suspect, on the other hand, does not. He's the one that's going to have to make bail and all of that other stuff, which the attorney doesn't care about necessarily because everything that he has suggested to you allows him to fight that battle for you in the battlefield that he understands. What I'm saying is that you can avoid that completely. You avoid that by, uh, and listen, let me, let me back up for a second here. You can be wrong in your perceptions, but still be legal in your actions, okay? Okay. So, you know, if a bad guy says, I'm going to blow your head off and reaches in his coat and I shoot him in the face, my perception was that he was going to pull out a pistol and shoot me because he said he was going to. Right. But what's in his coat is a cell phone. Well, <laughs> I was incorrect in my interpretation of the event, but I am still justified and legal in having shot him. Okay, got it, because it was okay. reasonable. Because, yep, absolutely. Now, if I don't tell the responding officer what happened, if I just, I'm not going to say anything, I'm going to wait till my mouthpiece shows up, you know, and these are my rights, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, what am I creating with, with that, that, uh, that first meeting? I'm creating an adversarial situation. Mm-hmm. And so put yourself in the shoes of the police officer or the homicide investigator. There's a dead guy. There's no weapons. There's no witnesses. And you're standing there, and you're not saying anything <laughs> until your attorney gets there. Okay? What, what the heck am I going to do? Yeah, right? I know. And, That's and what unless, drug dealers do. <laughs> unless your attorney's car is Code 3 equipped, or he's got yeah. a helicopter, and he's going to descend from the sky on a fast rope, we're not going to wait until your attorney gets We're going we're gonna to arrest you, book you for murder, and you know what? We're going to write the report, and then that's it. It's out of, our, out of our hands. In the meantime, you're sitting in jail, and you're not going to be let go. I mean, you know... You figure, you know, my gosh, a homicide. I mean, you're talking about a million dollars bail. Ten percent is a hundred thousand dollars. So it's a hundred grand, you know, that you need to write a check for to just go home and sleep in bed. And you haven't even given a penny to your attorney yet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know, if you can avoid that, it is to your benefit to do so. And you do that by comporting yourself as a gentleman, using the right words, and understanding what it is that the officers and investigators are looking for. So our training is based on showing you the battlefield that police officers and and homicide investigators are used to dealing with, okay? Their job and their their ethos every morning is not, let's put an innocent gun guy in jail. (laughs) That's not it, okay? What happens is that innocent good guys put themselves in jail by acting stupidly. You're saying there's middle ground. Um, yeah. And you actually teach this. You have a class that yes, teaches people how to do this. Uh, t- talk about your class briefly. Well, it's called uh, uh, Interview and Investigation Management. We've got, in fact, the first uh, organization of this class, a two-day class. We're teaching it here in Arizona in August. And it, it filled you know, within a couple of days of its announcement. And it's taught by uh, me and four other former and current law enforcement professionals 
and it teaches the student what the homicide investigator, the police officer, is looking for when he arrives on scene. And, and with the presumption that he hasn't shown up to work that day hoping to screw over a good guy. Okay, yeah. he's not. He's, he has a job to do. So what we do is we, we guide him in his discovery to find the right answers for the job. Uh, you know, in the context that I just uh, explained, you know, it would be, hi, officer, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Listen, this guy, I have no idea who he is. He seemed to, to know me. Uh, maybe he mistook me for somebody. He, you know, he swore at me and, you know, called me a mf -er and all this kind of stuff. And he said he was going to blow my head off right here and right now. And, you know, I've, I've seen this happen before. And, and, you know, I really thought he was going to kill me. And he reached in his jacket and, boy, thank God I was able to get my pistol out faster than he was, and, and he fell. You know, there he is. Uh, my gosh, you know, this hasn't, this has never happened to me before. I need to sit down. I got a headache and blah, blah, blah. And so you, you, you make statements that classify yourself as the victim. Truthful statements. This is, you know, if you did something wrong, you're not going to get away with it. It'll be found out. But uh, yeah. these, are, these are truthful statements that guide the officer's investigation um, to what's, what's going on. And it'll be found out. I mean, you know, forensics today and crime scene investigation, it's, a, it's an art, okay? So yeah. it'll be found out. But, you know, they need a place to start. And if you don't say anything, you don't give any statements at all, well, they've got to go just on what's face value. Evidence might be overlooked. Witnesses that, that might have helped to exonerate you are going to not be interviewed because the police officers don't know that they're even there. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Gabe, unfortunately, we are out of time for this segment. But, boy, as always, you've given us some great information. I know the listeners, they're thinking, man, i got a lot to think about here. I need to reevaluate some things. So uh, before you go, Gabe, tell people how they can get in touch with Suarez International. Sure. We've got a, a very big web presence. The, uh, the main website is suarezinternational.com. That's S-U-A-R-E-Z, international.com. Uh, we've got an online uh, forum uh, called warriortalk.com. And, uh, you know, we've got people here uh, answering the phone. Uh, it's 928-776-4492. You know, we're here at your service. Awesome. Okay, folks, that this is Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. I highly rececommend that you uh, get on YouTube, uh, check him out because he's got some very valuable information that he wants to give to you. Excellent trainer. Okay, folks, uh, Gabe, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, we got a two-minute break. Go ahead and check out our sponsors. Go to SuarezInternational.com. Uh, check out the Warrior Talk Forum. Uh, lots of good stuff out there. Uh, we're going to come back, and then I'm going to tell you what I really think. This is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my dad's Home Defense Radio Show. You're going to love it. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get civilian combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book, by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. 
Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. Now it's time for our Armed America Report. All of us here at Frontlines of Freedom want our listeners to get trained and get armed in that order. We fully support the right to keep and bear arms for all law-abiding families, and we encourage you to find out about the laws governing use of deadly force in your state and follow them to the letter. And of course, don't forget to follow the rules of safety and common sense whenever you're carrying a firearm to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Roland? Women have been buying an increasing number of firearms in recent years, and that trend is starting to make itself felt against those who try to commit criminal acts. In Arizona, for example, a shopper was getting ready to get into her car and drive home. While she was attempting to close the door of her vehicle, a man armed with a hatchet approached her, demanded that she hand over her keys, and get out of the car. The woman drew a sidearm and told the man to back off. Instead, the assailant raised the hatchet. The shopper proceeded to shoot him, holding him at gunpoint until the police and medics arrived. The suspect was hospitalized, and charges were to be filed later. Thanks, Roland. This is an interesting story. Presently, we are experiencing a rise in murder rates caused by edged weapons such as knives and hatchets. This is a worldwide phenomenon with especially high murder rates occurring in Europe, namely England and Germany. Experts disagree on why murder rates are climbing, but there is no denying the trend. In fact, for the first time ever, the murder rate of London has now surpassed New York City. That is surprising to many because England has very strict gun ownership laws. In order to address this problem, England is passing a new set of laws that will further restrict the possession and sale of knives. Apparently, there is also an increase in the use of acid in street attacks, so more laws are being passed to counter that threat as well. For decades, the left has been arguing with gun owners on whether or not more gun laws are needed to prevent crime, and the left always points to Great Britain as the model they'd like to follow. They always say, Look at the crime rate in England. It's four times lower than America. But then ask someone on the right and you'll get the opposite answer. That's the problem with statistics. They can be manipulated, and they are, depending on what outcome you'd like to achieve. I prefer to use logic instead of skewed numbers. For example, the woman in this story who was being attacked with a hatchet. What would she say if you told her she should give up her gun for the greater good? She would probably say something like, Okay, fine, but can I shoot this one bad guy first before he chops me up into little tiny pieces? For me, it's never been about the numbers. It's a question of mindset. Do you want to be a disarmed cheap, or do you want to be able to fight back with equal force if someone tries to kill you or someone else you love? I don't think the European model is working, but quite frankly, even if it did, I wouldn't want to follow it, simply because I'm a warrior, not a sheep. If the sheep of England would like to disarm, then more power to them. I'll just sit back and watch. But as for me and my house, we'll keep our guns, our self-reliance, and our military mindset. Frontlines of Freedom salutes this Arizona woman who fought back and refused to be a victim. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Oh, man, that Gabe Suarez. I like that guy. I've never met him in person, but it's on my bucket list. I've got to do some training with Gabe Suarez. Okay, so let's talk about Gabe for a few minutes. I know in the past he's taken some heat from other instructors because he's viewed as too harsh or too blunt or maybe even too unorthodox. But here's how I see it. Remember that audio clip I played back in segment one from the movie City Slickers? They were talking about the trail boss being played by Jack Palance, a rough, tough, old-school cowboy who shot straight but didn't take any crap. I respect that and always have. For me, I tend to stick with things that work. I'm a practical man. And when it comes to concealed carry training, I think practicality is even more important, simply because the stakes are so high. Too many people train on the square range by standing there all relaxed, getting in their perfect stance, and then very slowly throwing lead down range. Their only goal is to make one ragged hole, and if they achieve that, then they believe they're ready for a gunfight. I don't think that's true, because real-life gunfights are not fought on a square range where people aren't allowed to move. Gabe talked about getting off the X, 
and I think that's very important. If you stand still in a gunfight the same way you train on a traditional range, then you're likely to die. Now people who run gun ranges will say, hey, we can't have people doing that because it's dangerous. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. But think about it. Aren't guns dangerous already? And aren't you training for a deadly force confrontation where the bad guy isn't going to fight by following rules that you set up on a traditional square gun range? Gun ranges make those rules because they don't want anyone getting hurt on their property, because they don't want to get sued, and because they don't want any bad publicity. But my goal in training isn't to satisfy a gun range owner with those types of concerns. I want to train for a real-life gunfight, not something choreographed with safety and public relations in mind. So, I'm going to be moving and shooting. A lot. I'm not going for one ragged hole at 20 feet. 80% of all gunfights occur within a 12-foot distance, so 80% of my training will be done within 12 feet to make it as realistic as possible. Do I practice at longer distances? You bet. You don't get to choose the script for your gunfight. The bad guy does that. You need to be as versatile as possible, so train in a myriad of scenarios. All of self-defense is scenario-based, and there are literally an unlimited number of gunfight scenarios. So if you only train for a single scenario, then you're going to be unpleasantly surprised when the bad guy throws you a curve. The bad guy will almost always be the one to choose the time and circumstances of your gunfight. You have to be trained and ready for all gunfights, not just one. Now let's talk about Gabe's demeanor. He talks a lot about shooting people in the face. You won't learn that at most concealed carry training. They'll talk about shooting to stop the threat and shooting at center of exposed mass, but never about shooting people in the center of face. That's just not socially acceptable in the training world most of us live and play in. But if you can make that face shot at 6 or 10 feet, then wow! The gunfight is over and you get to stay alive and healthy. Does it make for good public relations? Not really. But what after all is your goal? Do you want to stay alive or do you want to die by being nice and playing fair? I want to stay alive by any legal and moral means available to me. But you'll never make that face shot if you haven't practiced for it. Let me make this perfectly clear. I don't want to be in a gunfight. I want to be in a shooting. A shooting where I'm the one who's doing all the firing. The moment I realize a deadly threat, then my gun comes out without hesitation and I do what I've practiced for. If I'm attacked and I make one hit to the center of face, then I've achieved my most important goal. I stop the threat and I get to go home to Sarah and my three little ones. And after all, isn't that why we carry a gun in the first place? Why carry a gun for personal and family defense if you're not willing to do what it takes to come out on top? Too many trainers are teaching folks like you and I to commit a kinder, gentler homicide. Folks, I have to tell you that there's no such thing. Death is pretty binary. Either you kill the bad guy or he kills you. If he runs away, that's fine, but you can't depend on that. You shoot for center of exposed mass until the threat stops, or if you get the opportunity and you can make the shot, you end it quickly with that center of face shot. Gabe Suarez is not a trained pony. He's a Mustang that won't be tamed, and I respect that. But here's what I respect more. All the gunfights he's experienced and survived. A few years ago, I had to have back surgery for a ruptured disc. I asked the surgeon this. How many of these surgeries have you successfully performed? I didn't ask this to offend him. I simply wanted to know that he'd successfully done this surgery and the patient actually got better. I respect experience. I respect success. A person who's survived, no, that, that's the wrong word. A person who's flourished through several gunfights has my attention. You can survive a gunfight and still be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. But when someone tries to kill you and you flourish, that means they're on the ground at room temperature and you get to walk away and go home to your family. It means you did something right that saved your life. It means you have a story to tell that's worth listening to. If you are training for a kinder, gentler homicide, one that looks good on film that no one can criticize, then don't come to my advanced classes because you'll be offended. Sometimes in my basic concealed carry classes, I get the impression that I'm training ponies so little kids can ride them without getting thrown off. That's all well and good, provided you never get in a gunfight, but I dare say that very few concealed carry holders are really prepared for a deadly force encounter. They're not Mustangs. They're just trained ponies for the kiddie rides. And that, folks, is what I really think. Okay. Oh, man. 
Well, I kind of vented on that one. And that's okay. Hey, this is my show. I can, I can do what I want. I, I can vent when I want. I can say what I want. And if you don't like it, hey, send me an email at skipcoriel at hotmail.com, skipcoriel at hotmail.com. And I will just be happy to read your email on the air, and I'll respond to you, give you personal attention. Okay, again, if you want to check out Gabe Suarez, go to suarezinternational.com, S-U-A-R-E-Z, international.com. And uh, I'm, I'm, I think you'll like Gabe Suarez and the way he teaches. And if you don't, that's okay. There's lots of instructors out there. You get to choose who you train with, and that's awesome. All right. Well, next week, we will be speaking with Pat Kolbeck. He is a Republican uh, candidate for governor here in Michigan. He's going to talk about his stance on the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. And uh, I would like to get on uh, Brian Kelly and Bill Schutte as well uh, to talk about before the primaries. And I'll be working on that so you guys can go into the voting booth informed. Well, okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!